With the Detroit Red Wings loss last night to the Carolina Hurricanes, they have clinched last place in the NHL. If they win every single one of the games they have remaining, they will not catch the second last team in points. So no matter what happens, if every team loses and Detroit wins, or if Detroit just stays the way they are, they are going to be last, and as a result, we have ourselves a little bit of a preview of what exactly the 2020 NHL entry draft is going to entail for Detroit. The way things are right now in the current draft lottery system, there are three lotteries done for the top three picks. Every team that is not a playoff team, or at least the pick belonging to every team that is not a playoff team, has the chance at becoming a first, a second, or a third overall pick based on the lottery. With this, the Detroit Red Wings are guaranteed a spot in the top four of the NHL entry draft. There are four possibilities. Either the first one, they win the first overall lottery, which they have the highest odds at doing so for an individual pick. If you want to take a look at the highest odds, collectively it's Ottawa because they have two lottery picks in their own and then San Jose's lottery pick as well because San Jose's kind of, yeah, they're not all too great this year. But the Red Wings, in theory, have the highest chance at first overall, then they have a chance to win the second overall lottery, they have a chance to win the third overall lottery, and if they're not able to win any of those lotteries and three teams below them, because if it's not Detroit, it's going to be three teams under them because there are no teams over Detroit, will go first, second, and third instead. So Detroit would drop over to four. We've seen it happen a few times in the past where the team with the best first overall odds drops over to number four. It actually happened last year where the Colorado Avalanche had the Ottawa Senators pick and they ended up drafting fourth overall because the Ottawa Senators pick didn't end up winning one of the lotteries. They ended up drafting Bowen Byram with that pick, and the way the Colorado Avalanche are right now, they absolutely did not need a Bowen Byram to make their system elite. They are already elite. But the Red Wings are in a similar spot as Colorado last year. Either they'll get first, second, or third, or fourth. So let's talk about four prospects the Detroit Red Wings could get at this upcoming NHL entry draft that I think deserve all the consideration in the world. Now, I do have a Why I Want video for all the players that we're going to talk about in this video, except for one of them. So, if you want extended talks about these prospects, you can check out the Why I Want series. It's a video where we talk about NHL prospects in the upcoming NHL draft. I'll leave a link in the description to the playlist where you can find those videos. The first one is Alexi Lafreniere, the Ramuski Oceanics golden boy, the best player in that league since Sidney Crosby, pretty much. And the way Lafreniere has been going, the way he is trending upwards, he's a guy who a lot of people are kind of depicting as an already NHL caliber player. If he played in the NHL this year, in 1920, you could argue that he probably could have gotten upwards of 40, 45 points. And the guy only turned 18 in October. Now, because he turned 18 in October, it means he is one of the older players in this NHL entry draft. Had he been born just a month and a bit earlier, he would have been eligible for the 2019 draft. And the thing is, a lot of people will speculate upon this, but... There was a very common idea that last year, if Lafreniere was eligible for the 2019 draft, there are many who say he would have gone first overall instead of Jack... Hughes. So that kind of paints a picture as to how dominant Lafreniere is just based off of the numbers, just based off of the hearsay. But this year, Lafreniere, at 18 years of age, got himself 112 points in 52 QMJHL games. Yeah, that's a lot. Last year, when he was only 17, he had 105 points in 61 games in a league where it was pretty much his playground. Nowadays, Lafreniere kind of just really took the league into his own hands, and not to mention the World Juniors, wherein he was at two points a game over there for Team Canada. 
everybody kind of knows how good Lafreniere is, and he is a legitimate 100-point potential player in the NHL. He is going to be a franchise talent. So, the way Lafreniere is shaping up today, to me, it screams first overall pick, and to me, it screams a player that can benefit the Detroit Red Wings 110% if he goes to Detroit first overall. Next up on our list, just in case the Red Wings win the number two overall spot in the lottery, they can draft themselves Quinton Byfield. We talked about Lafreniere being one of the older players in this draft. Byfield is at the opposite end of the spectrum. He is one of the younger players of this draft. Born August 19th, 2002, he's 17 years old. 6 foot 4 214 pounds. Quinton Byfield this season has taken huge strides in the OHL after a point per game rookie season last year. This year, Byfield is at 82 points in 45 games at the time of this recording, and people will talk about the World Juniors and talk about how he wasn't all too noticeable there, but to me, that's more an issue of deployment, the way he was used, and the fact that Alexi Lafreniere was given all the spotlight to shine on that Team Canada, whereas Quinton Byfield really wasn't. Quinton Byfield is almost a full year younger than Lafreniere, but the guy is in his own right when it comes to being able to control the OHL play. Byfield is the one that I don't have a Why I Want video, but trust me, it's in the works. So we'll have to wait a little bit for that if you want to see a full in-depth report, but Quinton Byfield is like a ballerina out there. Even though the guy is big, the guy doesn't really act like a power forward. He's not an Eric Lindros out there, he's no really strong Wayne Simmons-like player. Instead, he's like a ballerina, able to spin his way past guys, use his very quick, silky mitts, and his very pristine puck handling ability to control the play himself. His offensive awareness is very strong, and he's got a really good shot when he needs to use it. He's a very, very dominant player at the OHL level, and the potential is out of the world for this guy. He's only 17, he's already at almost two points per game in the OHL, and the fact is, he is so, so good. The people have been touting this guy as a franchise potential center for years now. Now, do I think he's good enough to overtake Lafreniere? Well, it depends on who you ask, but the potential for Byfield is so high that to me, it wouldn't really be so surprising if somebody were to draft Byfield first. But, if the Red Wings don't end up going first and second, they can get themselves a Tim Stutzel third overall, a guy who, in the DEL this season, has totally been controlling things over there, 34 points in 41 games played, playing in a full-out men's league as an 18-year-old. He recently turned 18 back in January, 6 foot 187 pounds. This guy is an absolutely dynamic hockey player, a guy who can shift around, a guy who can control the pace himself, a guy who can speed up when things are necessary, and a guy who's not afraid to cut into the middle from the perimeter once it's needed. Stutzel plays with such a high level of swagger in his game, and he knows how good he is when it comes to controlling the puck, deking out players, and opening space for himself. Stutzel has all the tools to become a great, lethal NHL point producer, and he has the confidence to boot alongside of that. Stutzel, to me, is a legitimate him at 70 to 80 point potential guy, and for the Detroit Red Wings, he's coming from a system that literally just had their previous first round pick last year playing for a two in Moritz Sider. Iserman loves to go off the board with their Germans, well I mean I said he loves to do that, he only did that once, but Stutzel is a guy who for this very reason has been on the radar for Red Wings fans, and there are many many good reasons for that. And moving on to our last player who I see the Detroit Red Wings being able to take if they don't win a lottery, they drop to fourth overall, they're going to be able to take a guy named Marco Rossi, who I just made a Why I Want video. He's an absolute powerhouse out there. He's only 5'9", 179 pounds, but he leads the CHL in points with 120 in 56 games played. Now, like Lafreniere, Rossi is one of the older players in this draft. He was born September 23rd, 2001, and he's a guy who makes the game look easy. The guy may not look like he's trying out there, but by the end of the night, you take a look at the statute and you look at it and you're like, huh, he got three points. I didn't realize it. 
Rossi is one of those dangerously sacred players that you watch and you just see him doing everything right. In his own zone, he backchecks hard, he puts a lot of pressure on the opposition, he always has an active stick, and he's able to steal these passes. In the offensive zone, the guy likes to take his time, analyze, and see the options available, before opening up some space and sending a pass through to an open guy in front. Either that, or he'll wind up and shoot it himself. Rossi is such a dangerous player, and for a guy who was only 5'9", he's really good at staying on his feet. Bigger body players in the OHL don't phase this player, as he's able to control things at will and play to the best of his ability almost every night. Last year, he only had 65 points in 53 games. This year, he doubled that. And now, as an 18-year-old, he is totally dominating the OHL and the CHL as a whole. Now, I mean, not CHL because he doesn't play against the rest of the CHL, but statistically, in the point production aspect, he is leading the CHL in points, so there's that. He's a guy who honestly could become a very lethal, one of the best playmakers in the NHL if he hits his absolute ceiling, which, even though he is 5'9", to me, is still very, very, very high. Now, the thing with this video is not a lot of people will agree 110%. Everybody kind of has the top two, Lafreniere and Byfield, slotted into that spot permanently, what it seems like. But there are other players who could go third or fourth overall. You could talk about Lundell, you could talk about Raymond, you can talk about Holtz, you can talk about Drysdale, you can talk about Yaroslav Askarov. We'll make why I want videos on all of these guys, hopefully, I, I really do hope so. But for now, these are four prospects that the Red Wings could take that I think are going to become really, really good NHL players. And if you're a Red Wings fan, you got to be happy because any one of these guys is guaranteed to be going to Detroit, if not one of those other players that we mentioned who are also going to be very good. But with the draft rankings solidifying themselves with Detroit being a top four team, that concludes the video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Switch on the Trollslay and I. And bye.